Hi, hello, and welcome. This is the actual start of the stream. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be up on YouTube, that's all you need to know. Uh, we are going to just get right on into it. Uh, when last we left off Silver, she was heading away from the manor of Duskin on her way back to Mandan in search of finding a mentor. Yeah, so I think it's going to be really important to kind of go through what Silver is thinking right now and what she's going through and what she's grappling with. And as she's walking to Mandal Mandolin, Mandan, she suddenly feels the over oppressive feeling of absence of being alone, not necessarily lonely, but that feeling of all she has right now is her. And on this walk, it's going to be really important for her to take time for herself. And as she's taking this walk, her mind immediately goes to her parents. And as she's thinking of them, all she can think and ask herself is, they left. They left when I was a kid and they chose adventuring over me. And I understand that I want to find the beauty in adventuring. And she's saying this as she's reflecting on some of her behaviors and being quirky and funny. It's because I'm desperate to find out what adventuring has that I don't. What makes adventuring more important, more vibrant, more fun than me? And that brings her to the realization that everybody leaves. Everybody leaves Silver. And her mind drifts off to Myth Luna and Scott and Fiacra, and how Silver made eye contact with this radiant and beautiful elven woman and immediately knew she was going to be her best friend. And she immediately knew she needed her in her life every day, but unfortunately, that's not guaranteed. So every interaction that they have, every conversation that they have, Silver reminds herself and puts it in the back of her head that that could be the last time. She floats over to Scott in her mind and how he's this little brother who just causes chaos and makes her laugh and grounds the team. But eventually, he might outgrow this. And once again, she mutters to herself, everybody leaves. And she goes to Fiacra, and immediately she is thought of this person just accepts Silver and just accepts her for who she is and, and flirts with her and, and doesn't think she's weird. But again, every flirtation she treats like it's the very fucking last because eventually Fiacra is going to wake up and realize she's just another annoying one in a million dwarf. She's a dime a dozen. And lastly, her mind floats to, to filigree. This perplexing person that is treating Silver like a job. Not like a human, but like an actual job. And that's forcing Silver to keep her at arm's length, but something... And she doesn't know what something is fighting her to pull her into filigree and never let go. But that is a different level of vulnerability that she doesn't know she's ready for yet. A different kind of vulnerability that strikes deep in the heart 
and she has no idea what that means. But at least with filigree, she's guaranteed to leave. And as she spirals, she pulls herself back, and she realizes she's not mad at this. She's actually really proud of her friends for having the self-awareness to realize that they've outgrown her, that they're not ready for her anymore, and they don't need her anymore. But what she truly wants is to keep them safe so that way when they do move on with their lives and they do find better people, they can rest their head at night and think of how Silver at least helped them get to that moment. Even if it's just a sliver of a thought, she wants her friends to rest easy knowing that she was there. And as that spiral continues, she takes a deep breath. Tears are starting to come out from the corner of her eyes. And she asks herself, what if it does work out? What if she is vulnerable with filigree? What if she does become best friends for life with Mithluna and Scott and Fiacra? Maybe that could include Mithluna, Scott, and Silver living in a little cottage. And Fiacra probably lives a few houses down because they like their privacy. And hopefully, maybe, Filigree will be there too. But even if she's a couple towns over, at least she knows she's close. And with that thought, she smiles and it makes her really happy. And that's when she finally approaches Mandon. After three days' journey, making it into Mandon feels different. The town doesn't feel the same when you last left it. Yeah, there's no more chaos of a fight. Things have been cleaned up. The buildings have been mostly repaired, but there is a somberness here. And it hits you as you get to the town square. The statue that everyone was worried that something had just been a fleeting thing is the same. Lord Navarro stands somber and downtrodden upon his own pedestal. There's a few more people around town than usual. More adventurers, it seems. As time picks up shortly after the first of the year, so does business. And adventurers start traveling again. You take the first day back to regather your bearings and start putting out feelers for trying to find a mentor. While you're up at the manor, you had asked around a little bit for trying to get some information, and the same thing kept popping up over and over again. Find someone in the Adventurer's Guild that has been there much longer than you. So you start searching and asking around. You eventually land at going by the Adventurer's Guild Hall in town. And a young dwarven man with a fairly short beard mentions that there's actually a duo that is passing through town waiting for a ship it should be uh, their ship is leaving in the early part of summer so they're taking up small odd jobs and because current need is small in Mandan at this exact moment 
they are currently out training a little bit to the west of town in a clearing. As you head off that way, after having set up yourself at uh, the inn, you see them. And at first, it seems a bit strange. You've heard throughout history that war breed were created to fight a war, and usually were left to fend for themselves or die off afterwards. And it is very rare for there to be a lineage that properly lasts. By the looks of the man in his late 20s to early 30s, he's been at this for a bit. War breed mature quickly, but once they hit their plateau, they stay there until well into their 50s or 60s before they start properly petering off. Sparring with this man who is holding a great sword, a weapon in design that you have not seen before. It is a two-handed wavy flamberge that is a two-handed sword with a wave to it. Uh, yeah, look up flamberge. They're, they're nasty weapons. Doing it right now. Yeah. But... The cross guard on it is much smaller than you would expect. Oh. Yeah. That's nasty. That's a great sword. Like, it's the same length as a yeah. claymore would be, which is, in D&D terms, the length of a great sword. A two-handed heavy weapon. On his back is a uh, kite shield, and at his side is a arming sword. So, Flamberge, uh D&D terms, great sword, shield, and long sword. The person that he is sparring with has two short swords. Gladiuses. They are well-worn, but also very well-kept. The handles, even at this distance, have seen better days, but the blades are beautiful polish. She is wearing breastplate armor with uh, a set uh, with scale, uh, so with a scale skirt underneath which seems a bit redundant when you notice her scaly arms and hands and legs and feet she doesn't have a tail which is actually uncommon from a lot of the dragon folk you have seen And it is easy to tell that she is a dragon folk. With, uh, uh, despite her having a pulled up hood that covers a good bit of her head, her movements are distinct, trained. She has been in combat for a while. Not just with this person, but in general. Give me a history check at advantage real quick. Okie dokie. Uh, 
Yeah, I rolled like shit. Uh, ten. <laughs> I rolled a nine and an eight. Dragonborn are rare. Okay. Like, they're not common to be seen. Add that with the fact that the couple Dragonborn that you have met and the one or two that is friends with your people something is strange about them you know that like uh first bloodline of war breed dragon kin are referred to as dragon knights for a reason. They are created for war. They are not a natural creature. War breed can be. You can get the genetics into having a war breed without using magic. Though so by the grayish green skin tone that the man has who is wearing uh, hide armor, mind you. That he has a bloodline that falls back to creation. He can probably trace his war breed heritage back to a mage and a tower. Can I approach them? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna, after the realization that I had, I probably would have gone to my hotel room, turned it, like, changed it into my muscle tank, so I look like I'm ready to work. But that that personality of Silver just sort of slips out a little bit and she just Um Hi. As you say that the Warbreed looks away for uh, looks away from the sparring match just at the right moment for his opponent and the worst moment for him as she steps forward planting one foot hard into the ground and then lifting up planting the other foot hard into his chest setting him back a good few feet uh, sorry uh, <clears throat> I should have known better yeah. I'm okay. She'll, she'll reach out a hand to help him up. As you do, he gently but firmly moves your hand away at the wrist. Using the back of his wrist. Okay. So it's more of one of those, like, kind of movements. Yeah. As he stands up to his full... Six six height. Uh, hi. If it makes you feel better, you you landed really really nicely. The landing is not the part that hurts. Right. Uh. Well. I apologize for the interruption, and since I do kind of have your attention, I was sent here to ask for some help. Well, if you have a contract, you can always send it through the Adventurer's Guild, and we'll begin to check usually at the end of the very day. Uh, it's less of a contract situation and more of um, 
I'm looking for a mentor. Some someone to help me with my fighting skills. As you say the word mentor, the other person looks uh their attention is finally caught to you. They sheathe both of their swords on the same side and walk and start moving towards your direction. Their movements are as precise as their combat. The man, Silver, go ahead. The man stands, uh, like, barely turns his head with a noticeable, like, recognition of the movement. Which, you've only seen one other person have that level of, like, spatial awareness. Which is your people. So I have seen this before, I was about to ask. Yeah, you've seen someone who has these facial awareness of like, okay, something's moving, and I'm still in like adrenaline combat mode. Wow. So. Yeah, and it's not even a like full turn. It's just a like that very little movement, and he seems to know exactly where she is before looking down to you, taking a step back. Uh. And what brings you to us then? Aside, aside from the fact that that interaction was super hella cool, like I want to be able to do that. Uh, I have I have plans for myself, right? Like I have long term plans of what I want to do, and I I think I need help can't believe I'm admitting that out loud. I, I just think I just need someone to guide me. I don't want to be an Avenger paladin, like vengeance pal Avenger, <laughs> uh, a, a vengeance paladin, like my peepaw. You'd know your people actually as a paladin of devotion. Okay. I thought you said vengeance. My bad. Uh, While he has had that in his past, when he picked up his uh, weapons to train with you and travel with you on his earlier ranges. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he devoted himself. Oh, that's right. To training and protecting. Right. Okay. Mix those up. Uh, wreck on <laughs> that. I understand that my peepaw was a path of devotion. I said that right. Yes. Yeah, I said that right. Um, he also stressed that I should always just be silver. And that path never really fit me. I want to be a fighter and I want to be a battle master, which is what I am right now. And I think eventually long term, and I know you guys probably can't do this for me as I want to channel this rage, and I want to channel it in such a way that I can put it out in the battlefield. But until I get to that point, I, I, I need help with moving this further and getting better. And you believe that one of us is capable of bringing that out in you? Yes. I did ask around town a little bit, um, and everyone suggested you, so you, you, you come with really great referrals and recommendations. They both start slowly pacing. First the man starts moving, and then when he's about uh, when he's about to your other side, the dragonborn starts the same pacing movement, and they are now circling you in a perfect rhythm. Where they are always equal distance apart from each other, with you dead center. 
I'm not going to say this out loud, but internally, Silver's like, I got to figure out how to do this with Llama. With, with llama. <laughs> Don't say it out loud, though. And she's going to hold back a smile. Um, and she's going to try to not look intimidated. Like, she's going to look like she's standing firm. We are not the easiest to deal with. Perfect. Neither am I. Neither of us is very accustomed to having a squire. And I'm not accustomed to having a mentor. I think that's perfect. We can learn from each other. If we take this deal, it won't be the two of us. And he stops. By the customs that we both abide by, only one can be your mentor. The other woman stops at his side. The other will be a part of the training exercises as deemed by your teacher. Can I ask a couple questions first? It would be wise to do so. So, yes. As you were circling around me, what were you analyzing? What was your assessment? More things than we can put in a simple conversation. But know that it is because of what we saw that we are continuing this conversation. Am I allowed to ask what you saw? Potential. And she's going to smile really big at that. Interesting. And she's trying so hard not to be silver in this moment. And she thinks about Llama and how Llama would treat the goddesses and, and the gods because she collects them now. And she, she's going to take a deep breath. She's going to mutter under her breath. I get to pick my best friend. Nope, didn't say that out loud. She says that part two. Um, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but Lucas. They didn't, uh, in this particular run, they haven't told you their names yet. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I'm, and I'll point to the, the, mask one i think they said the pronouns are he that or he right he him so far yes he him and they them right to the best of your knowledge yes um i'm going to look towards the mask and say you seem so nice and i need someone who's going to challenge me and be a little bit hard on me 
and my instincts are saying you'd be best for that other portion of my training like lady or i don't know her name i don't know their name like they were saying and she'll turn towards the dragonborn and say i would like you to teach me i feel like we'd have a really fun dynamic At this point, the Dragonborn reaches their hands up, grabs the edges of their uh, hood, and pull it back. And for the first time, you're noticing how matte these black scales are. They are almost absorbing the light. But the eyes are a stark almost ice blue with almost a glow to them and you're also noticing a slight femininity of the face this will probably be the worst decision you make. That's why I picked you. We shall see how you match up in the morning. So, so that's a yes. I will give you one day to prove your worth. I think that's fair, and I'm going to prove you right. Wrong? I'm going to prove you right. I can do this. I have potential. We shall see. Um, question. Where do I sleep? Do you not have a room at the inn? I do. I forgot. That was a Brie moment, not a silver moment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I have a lot going on up in my brain today. The rest of the day goes without any issue. I think... Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you do your question first. Your question well, by I get... statement. Because um, I would like to do a couple things in the hotel room before I take a long rest. So that's... If we haven't gotten there yet, I'll wait. No, we, we got there. Okay. I think as she enters the room... She's going to let her goofy, quirky silver side come out a little bit so that way she can, like, get it out and just not in front of Lady Ghent, at least not yet. Um, and so she's going to check under her bed to make sure Scott actually didn't sneak in behind her, uh, make sure he wasn't actually following her. And when she notices that he's not there... She's going to get a little somber. And then she's going to look in the corner of the room and the chair and notice Mithluna is not in fact there. And so now that she knows the coast is clear, though, uh, can we say she has like a piece of rope, like a longer piece of rope? Yeah. She, she's going to take it out and she's going to measure her bicep every night before she goes to bed. <laughs> To see if they get bigger. Uh, <laughs> this is a way to distract herself. So she'll 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 tie the rope around her arm really tight and then mark it with the number one for day one. And so each day she'll mark one, two, three, four, and she wants to see if she makes progress and become a little bit of a muscle mommy. <laughs> So 
So you get your long rest. <laughs> uh, I get killed. You're welcome. Uh, how long will it take for Silver to be going from either hand to hand combat or borrowing a weapon to bringing out the axes? I think she would follow Lady Gant's advice because that's what a, you know what I mean? Like that's what her, that's what she's doing. So I think she wants to start with hand to hand just in case, like we talked about. Um, I think she's mostly doing it knowing Silver to be more of a badass. Like I can hit with my fists just like I can hit with my axes. I also think there's a serious part of, I don't know where I came up with this, but uh, this is Bree speaking, not Silver. But for whatever reason, the statement for Silver that always that came to mind was, you yourself are more powerful than your actual weapons. Like, the weapons are a conduit for your strength. So, like, having that, those things are great, and they make her more powerful and make her better, but she also doesn't want to have to rely on that all the time. Which she is in battles, realistically, right? Like, right. she's going to always have her axes. But she wants to be able to confidently say, it's not my axes, it's me. Right. Does that make sense? It does. And yeah. you notice that as you are training and as you're sparring, Lady Gant seems to be holding back a little bit as she is matching you with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Anytime that you land a hit, it seems to not quite properly... Like, you're not feeling the connection that you've had when you've gotten in bar fights before. Hmm. Like, when you uh, when you end up, like, get, even getting a straight shot into her chest, there isn't that same thud. It's as if she recoils back at the last second, softening the hit. Making it less satisfactory every single time. Uh, uh Lady Gant. You you don't have to hold back on my account. And you don't have to hold back on mine. I'm not holding back. You said you are a battle master. Yes. You had mentioned your armor is being refitted. Also, yes. Yet you travel without weapons. Oh, I have weapons. Then why are you holding back? Well, you want me to pull out my weapons. I want you to try. Okay. Because they're, uh, this is Brie asking, they're in my skin right now, right? Yes. <laughs> like, the tattoos, <laughs> you want the, the bracers? Are, yeah. uh, are a set of, like, iron shackles on your wrist. Okay. That do not go. Like, they... It, it is welded in place. Like, these iron bands are... They fit your wrist perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like, they they don't twist really in your hand, on your wrist. And even any movement that you can tell doesn't hurt. You're pretty sure it okay. is a feature of the magic among it of it's not going to hurt you, but because of its design, without severely damaging your hand, you can't take it off. Yeah, that's right. They're permanently on me. Yes. And the chains start at about your wrist here, 
and wrap up your arm. That's so cool. Before going under your arm one last time and then up over your back where the axes end up sitting. So, in essence, if they weren't in your skin, you just have the chain wrapped around your arm mm -hmm. and then it goes under your arms at the last moment and sits over your back. So cool. So stinking cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to summon them and I'm going to say blood and earth and try and get them in my hands. As you, you've practiced this a few times, you shift your shoulders forward as they axes start flying upwards and you immediately grab them bring your arms forward and sh uh, like shake your arms just that little bit for the chains to be completely off your arms so that way you can use them to their fullest extent yeah you mean these weapons as you do that you see her draw her swords still in their scabbards like the scabbard has a bit of a tie that ties around mm -hmm. the uh pommel around the uh cross guard mm -hmm. and she draws both of the weapons at the same time scabbards still on you oh, know okay. that a scabbard adds weight yeah. So she's still handicapping herself. And yeah. also she's using blunt instruments against you with your bladed instruments. I just look at my axes and look at her. I don't I don't actually want to hurt you. Like you can try. And she takes a step forward, mm -hmm. planting one foot, and you've seen her do this a couple times. And you think that you're going to be clever. Yeah. And you start to dodge out of the way to your left. And she pivots just perfectly. Reaches up and plants her foot right in the middle of your chest. Uh. Just above the cleavage, right where the bone is. Sending uh. you back onto your back. That's what I mean. Don't hold back. You start and give me a reason. Because how will I be able to learn if I don't know what the other end feels like? This will help me keep myself safe because I don't want to feel that again. That hurts a little bit. Just a little, though. <laughs> she just looks at you and gives you the first of soon to be many knowing grins <laughs> and she'll scamper up and she'll hold out her axes ready for this are you and she'll smile and she'll go in for the first swing the sparring match goes for several hours anytime that you start to feel like you're getting winded she will step aside and you're noticing that though she ends up like kicking you several times not just the foot plant but she'll like sidestep and get a like the top of her foot into like your chest or your shoulder or your back Ugh. every time it hits it hurts less. Give me you... a investigation at advantage. Okay. Let's not use that dice anymore. I'm rolling like <laughs> llama. No offense, Katie. <laughs> but... <laughs> wow. I'm so good at rolling today. 12. 12. You actually do get to the DC range. You... Your grandfather has used this kind of ability. Oh. Above table, uh, meta moment, it's lay on hands. Oh, okay. So she's keeping me alive so she can beat the shit out of me more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. She is a paladin that is using her 
ability to keep you standing long enough to where she can beat you more. I love her so much. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> I respect that and right on, man. After a couple days of this kind of training, at the end of every evening, you get to your room and you are just as tired, just as broken, just as hurting. You wake up in the morning before dawn, as she tells you to do after, after that first day. And the first thing that you do is you make, is you do a run with your weapons out at this point now that she's seen them. She makes you run with your weapons out around the entire city. My eyes just twitched. <laughs> yeah, it's a small city. <laughs> But like but it's still, still like it's it's a good distance. And then after that, she has you eat a quick breakfast, mm -hmm. usually made by the ta uh, by the inn. And after you've finished eating, she has you stretch and rest. And once she can tell that the food is not going to reoccur, the rest of the day begins. At the end of the third week of this. No, at the beginning of the third week of doing all of this is when... She starts standing at your side during the lessons. And your new combined opponent, though she lets the opponent be the heavier focus, is Lucas. <laughs> More often than not, sword and board. And also, more often than not, wearing half-plate armor. The hide armor that he was wearing seems to be a much more relaxed outfit. During this entire time that you've been training, rumors have been popping up. And... One day, your training is cut short, and you are told to make three laps of the city, and then polish your weapons from end to end before going to bed. And as you're told this, Lucas properly returns holding a bounty in his hand. The next morning you hear uh, rumors of a bounty having been paid out for a pack of dire wolves that had gotten close to the city. But your training starts the next morning same as ever. Uh, you know, Lady Gant, we could have taken on some dire wolves this morning. I mean, look how buff I got. Did the rope actually change yet? In the three? Despite what you thought was going to happen, it's actually gotten smaller. <laughs> no, that's okay. But. Yeah. As you're doing other measurements, you're realizing that a lot of the body fat that you had built up from mining and all of that mm -hmm. is being changed into muscle tone. Yes. Like okay, that's Lady like... Gant, you're not becoming like swole. You're getting yeah. lean working muscle. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. 
Like she I'll seems kind it. of yeah, like she seems a bit stringy, but when you flex, yeah. you're noticing that you can actually see the detail in your muscle and arm a lot more now, despite the fact that you've actually lost about an inch of uh, your arm size. So you've gone from this kind of arm to a thinner, more toned muscle. Yeah, and I'm still gonna flex. Like I could use these, like these weapons to fight some dire wolves. They were displaced by another creature. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, it all works out in the end. During this time this... that uh... Sorry. I was going to ask, does this catch her off guard? Because I would like to swing to try and catch her off guard to see if I can get a hit in. Roll your attack. Oh, I get to... Okay. <laughs> um... Oh, that's not bad. Uh, 23 to hit. You do actually make a solid hit for the first time. Yeah. And I'm immediately going to back off. Sorry. <laughs> Not yet. Yes, ma'am. And as soon as she <laughs> says that, she unclips one of her swords. You see her reach for it and faster than you've seen her move to date. She is up in front of you and swinging one of her weapons into your torso with a slashing strike. Luckily, the blade that she grabbed was not the one that she had initially unhooked. <gasps> but the wind is knocked out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Point proven. Point proven. <laughs> Over this time that you've been with these two, you notice that the connection that Lady Gant and Lucas have is different. Like, you've seen adventurers that have worked together. But something definitely seems off about them. It wasn't until... One of the later evenings when you couldn't sleep due to pain keeping you awake, despite everything that she did, they decided to take a walk. You know, try and see if a little bit of extra movement will relax the other muscles that are hurting. <laughs> Everything in my body hurts. <laughs> Everything hurts and I'm dying. <laughs> it hurts and I'm dying, but at least I'll look really good. Not that I'm superficial and she's gonna say that to herself as like a motivational like it wasn't the goal to look better. I just wanted to get a little swole to, you know, give myself some confidence and feel good about myself, but I don't feel good. This hurts. As you get down to the dock, you see the uh, you see both of them just sitting on the edge of the dock with Lucas's head in Lady Gant's lap as they're both looking out towards the water. Oh. This is the first time that you've seen either of them seem vulnerable. I think Silver's going to take a pause 
And she's going to look at the two of them and kind of tilt her head. And she's her she's gonna let her mind wander for a minute because she wants them to sit there and she doesn't want to interrupt right away. I know surprising people skills. Scott's in my head. But I I take a moment and I get this weird pulse in my heart and this weird pulse in my chest. And I think, do I do I want that? Why am I not jealous, that's not the right word, but why is that so sweet to just have someone that you know you can end your nights with, even if it's as simple as just looking out together? And that it'll almost disintegrate, that pulse in her chest will almost disintegrate into a whole icy feeling in a good way all over her body and she'll have chills and a face will flash in her mind but she shoves it away too quick to even capture who it was but she could you know how that sometimes happens you're like oh gosh there's nope we're gonna tuck that away and i think she's going to very gently very gently walk up and she's just going to sit not with them not right next to them but she's just going to sit on the dock and she'll kind of go like a <clears throat> it is rude to stare or interrupt one's private time. You're you're right, but and I apologize, and I can see how this is coming across as rude. Do do you want me to go? <sighs> you're already here. What is it that you want? And no, they haven't looked at you yet. But as that sigh happens, Lucas sits up and stretches. And you're noticing that the like upper outfit that you thought he had on, which is one oh, you thought it was one of the several different like sleeveless tops that he has. Mm -hmm. Which you have now realized the reason it's sleeveless and as loose as it is. It's that way it can fit over most any armor that he wears. And he seems to have more than one type of armor. Because you've seen him in full plate. You've seen him in... Like, because how armor works, there's several different layers to it. And... Mm -hmm. But this particular one is just a vest. Lucas is kind of a fashion nova for armor i didn't say that in character but that's that's yeah. free uh but this particular like piece is a vest and you also notice that there is even from the angle you, uh, that you're at mm -hmm. from how you're sitting to how they're sitting because they're sitting both with their knees at like going directly down the dock which means that they sitting a bit farther back than you probably are yeah my feetsies are probably in the water, if I can reach. <laughs> you can't reach. Their feet can't <laughs> <No>. <laughs> even reach. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I figured, but it's a fun thought. Her little feetsies are dangling over the edge. Uh, but, like, their feet are dangling over the edge of the dock. Like, with their... They're basically, like, just as if it's sitting in a chair, but mm -hmm. on the dock. And if you're sitting in a similar-ish fashion where... You're sitting down with your uh, with a dock like at your knees. They're yeah. sitting farther back than you, not by much, mm -hmm. but by enough for you to notice that Lucas has several scars on his chest, and one of them is a fairly bad-looking scar that runs from just above his collarbone at his right side. 
that goes all the way down to just above the belt line at the left side. Like, it is a huge scar down his torso. Holy there are other ones. If you want to try and spot me more, you know, I'd be willing yeah. to have a perception check. Yeah, actually, because I'm curious. <laughs> Why am I? I'm getting rid of this dice real quick. Twelve. Twelve. You notice the next worst one, mm -hmm. which is not that big. It's about four inches wide and about an inch tall. And it is just above and to the right. So almost at the center part of the rib cage and one or two ribs above where his heart is. It is a horizontal scar. And by the looks of it, if it was any other positioning, it would probably have killed him. Holy You're smoke. not sure if you can see You can't see the back. But with an educated guess, that's probably a through and through scar. Oh, uh, what would what would Silver do? Um, did her peepaw have scars? Oh yeah, he has okay. several. Uh, he has a ton of scars on his chest and back. Uh, like you've seen him without his shirt on. Uh, look up images of older. Geralt? Yeah, I was just about to say, it reminds me of Witcher 3. Yeah, like, that, or like, a little bit older range of, like, those heavy range of scars, like... Yes. Yes. And why did my brain go to Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> Christian, who did this to you? That's one of the lines about it. Why won't you just let me in? Um... That is not the community. <laughs> What? That is not the community. That's abuse. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. There's a very distinct difference. My best friend and I rage watch them, and it just makes us so angry. But it's so bad. It's so quotable. Like in some scenes that are just like. So... Anyway. Anyway, sorry. Back we to won't the plot. Go on that tangent. And back to the plot. Um. Did was she used to um being able to talk to her peepaw about these scars? I'm trying to navigate how she's going to react to this. Almost every time that she has attempted to talk about the scars, he was... It seemed like he was starting to the story and then go into a grand fantastical story about him and his husband and then into something about another relative... And the entire situation is always completely diverted. Okay. He will always engage you during the process, but you have no idea how your peepaw got any of his scars. Yeah. Except for one. Your peepaw has a scar just above his beard on his right cheek mm -hmm. and he got that scar on the wedding day as a particular tradition that has since no longer uh, has since been removed <laughs> but because he married a war chief to show that you are brave you must brave your betrothed to be sending attack your direction to prove that you are willing to stand for them 
in any condition. And he stood there, tall and proud, as an arrow glanced right past his cheek. As just like a character note, Silver would be so glad that that doesn't exist. She'd be willing to do it, but like... She's it's also so a specifically a like you're getting ready to marry a blood screamer type thing. Yeah, like, yeah. And there's stuff similar to it. Like you do have to take a literal beating, still. Right, right. But like, yeah, it, it's not a you have to brave potentially death, death. on your wedding day. Oh, Hope God. that your loved one is a good shot. That's and that you don't like... flinch. Yeah, and that's probably why she's not going to marry a blood screamer. Uh, spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Uh, she will. She'll totally marry a blood screamer. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, okay. Trying to figure out how to navigate the fact yeah. of... Because I, the reason why I'm navigating it this way is because I know Bree, the therapist, is like, like, oh, I know exactly what to do, but it's Silver, not Bree, the therapist. Um, because the only scars that Silver would have would be coming from the mines and maybe some like, you know, cause she has a scarred face, but that's in my mind is she hit a rock wrong and it, but she tells people it was some fight, like <laughs> she, you know, um. And probably some scars from battles, but she hasn't seen war. Like, she's just an adventurer. But So she's going to go up to Lucas. Well, she's just going to kind of scoot, you know, like Little Rascal style. Like, uh, she's going to scoot. So you've seen some shit, huh? Yes. Any stories you want to pass on to your curious squire? Lucas's uh, uh, eyebrow raises as he looks towards you for a moment. One day when I have one, probably. Her eyes are immediately going to go to the scar on his chest. He looks down for a moment and then back up to attempt to meet your eyes. Though you've faced him down a few times, this is the first time that you're noticing that his eyes are not really a brownish color like you had thought for the longest time. His iris and pupil are but he has no iris. His pupils are just that big all the time. Okay. Like his eyes are like the coloration of his eye is just black. Lucas. Um are we we, we don't we don't have to. Um so, instead of that, I'm kind of curious. You and Lady Gant, are you best friends? Although I don't really snuggle with Miss Luna. Um, I mean, sometimes we do, depending on how cold it is, but that's for logical reasons. What, what's, what's some... Um, What's what's the situation there? He looks over his shoulder for a moment and says and asks something. You can tell it's a question in a language that you do not understand. And Lady Gant just sits there Still having not looked at you. Like, she is still just looking out over the water. And she just nods. 
before he turns back. We are soulbound. Like, like your soulmates? There is a old ritual that few pass down across the ages. When one binds their soul with another, they are entwined till death. And she's just red and, like, happy. You know that emoji with, like, the little smile and, like, the big eyes and, like, the, yeah. that silver's face? You're also noticing in this light that Lucas has a slight bluish tint to the green-gray of his skin. I they can't. That's so As... sweet. You're also noticing that his hair has a bit of a, like, bluish tint. Out of character moment. Is he blushing? No. Oh. Can I, is there a check I can do to, or insight check, maybe, to see what's happening? Um. Uh, yeah, that's early enough. Give me a history check. History, okay. Yeah. It's a flat roll because while you would technically have an advantage fucked. because of people talking about it, it's been a while since he's talked about it. I need new dice, man. I'm <laughs> 10. You're I'm not sure exactly all... what it is. Okay. I'm rolling all 10s tonight. I don't know why my dice like that number. Uh... Oh, uh, do give me another... Uh, give me an investigation real quick. God damn. Uh... Do you want to just use digital dice real quick? Like, yeah. D20, yeah. uh, like, D&D Beyond uses... A dice roller, you can... Yeah, I'll just do that. Nope, that's the same number. <laughs> do you want me to start rolling for you? No, <laughs> we're gonna make this work. We're gonna... <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Not ten. I can't figure it out. Interesting. Um, That's really... really sweet, but... Uh, another question, and I think I might have to roll with this. Do I know, because you dropped lore after our last stream, would uh, Silver know about the those two f battling it out? Ancestrally? Like, yeah, during the war, weren't those two species at war with each other? Ancestrally, you, that that is a known fact. Like, that is a okay. known quantity. Like, okay, so she would know that. Yeah, uh, they're love for each other mm -hmm. or the natural hatred that uh is kind of impaired to them is like any marine at the beginning of any major conflict but we'll pick vietnam mm -hmm. world war ii how mm -hmm. everyone felt towards the germans axis versus ally like any major war it's say it's beyond in their dna it is part of their soul when they're being created because it's part of the war indoctrination but after the war is over and after blood has cooled even sometimes in the middle of war mm -hmm. blood cools and the i hate you for being other i hate you because i know for a fact that you are on the side that i see as the bad guy that is the reasoning of why whenever I bring up of a, like, they are sworn blood enemies by genetics. It is, they are born into that indoctrination, and many of them either die or break free from it over time. 
but you're also able to tell that their interactions are different. Different how so? She seems much more calm and level-headed. I see. When he's as around. You, as you've been training, you notice that he is much more of a hothead on the field. Gotcha. Okay. So they balance each other out. Right. Lady Gant. Yes, Squire. Listen, I think it's okay that we get to know each other a little bit. I mean, if you're going to beat the shit out of me, I would at least like to know who was hit beating me, you know, and training me. So I was just kind of wondering, how did you and Lucas get started? I mean, with the wars and everything, how did you, how did, how did this happen? He is not directly of a war, and my war is long forgotten. Fair enough. So, was it soulbound at first sight? Was it friends to lovers? Was it enemies to lovers? Like, what's your what's your what's your trope? And she's gonna get all like girly and like wants to do some girl talk with Lady Gant just to bond. And she's just gonna wiggle her shoulders and she's gonna get all excited just because it's finally downtime and she feels like she can be a little bit silvery. He Jesus. was on a trip as a adventurer and we joined the same bounty with several others. Most of them were incompetent. We split the bounty after returning to the guild and continued working together since. What she doesn't bring up mm -hmm. is the fact that after the rest of our adventuring party had been slaughtered on the field, we started training and making sure that it wouldn't happen to us again. We then realized that we couldn't trust others to not die around us. I guess that's the magical curse that many of us were taught. Those that are doomed to be caught between the two of us end up in something out of their league that'll probably take their life. Yeah, I, that struck something deep. Is that why you were hesitant to take a squire? Always. I made a promise to someone to not die, so I, I promise I'm not going to die. <laughs> that is not a promise that you get to keep. But it is a promise that I can keep to fight to do everything I can to prevent it from happening. Very true. And we will do what we can to 
give you the best chance at survival. Exactly. And Silver will go from that blushy cutesy to just very internal. How did you move past being party members into just soulbound? Like, this is mind-blowing to me of how you just met this person and they stayed. That's amazing and rare. Lucas looks over to Lady Gant for a moment. And she just places her hand on his knee and nods. Seems like a pretty normal bounty. Escort a noble from one manner to another. Standard affair. He had his normal guard, but he wanted to shore up with a peace treaty being on the a new peace treaty being on the docket. Were you caught by surprise? Field bounty. And... We almost... Didn't keep our promise to each other. After that, we decided to look into a ceremony for each other, making sure that we could keep each other safe. And while the normal ceremonies are powerful, Lady Gant knows one that is a bit more. You have to trade something with the other person. And seeing as I couldn't trade hearts with her after scarring on mine, we decided to See the world through each other's perspective moving forward. At this moment, you now notice that his eyes are that color, that dark color, because they match her body. Yeah, that's And her quick. eyes are that ice blue because of his body. Roll me a history check. At advantage. Okay. Woo! I just threw my dice. Maybe that's why they're not really all well. A submissive 20. It's starting to match up a little bit more now. You're noticing where you've seen his... genetic coloration before. Your father at one point and your grandfather many a times have brought up the old war and it's in the lore of your house how lord devaro brought you all together under one banner which means you know the stories of lord navarro and you know that the one that they faced against. A very unique war breed. From Uro. Had 
learn the magic to create new ones. And all of them had a bluish tint to them. And their hair, and their skin, and all of their eyes are an ice blue. Like hers are now. Wow. You can also tell that none of the descriptors of Lady Gant match any descriptors of the Dragonborn that were known for that war. None of the king's phalanx looked like she does. Oh. Give me a... I think the close would be uh, basically an untrained arcana. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure you're not trained in arcana. No, I mean, I have a plus one to it, but... Uh, 13. 13. There's something about her, but you're not quite sure what it is. So that... Uh, that breedable 20 is a good enough point that you are starting to realize of where you have seen the swords before. Her swords are wielded by the same guards that... Uh, I'm getting her name. I want to say it's S Susan. Susan! The dragon. Yeah. Her, her guards carry swords like that. Okay, and Su was Susan was not a dragonborn, right? No, no, you you know for a fact at this point that she is a full-blooded dragon. Yeah. Whoa. I would like to imagine as because I know this all kind of happens instantly, but knowing Silver and because like the Arcana check is untrained and she's kind of processing all of this history, she's still kind of dazed. Like, looking at them, not, like, dazed as in, like, she's dissociating, but, like, dazed as in she's really trapped in this lore of, like, I am utterly fascinated, and I'm utterly lucky to have these mentors, and it's just I have the coolest fucking people in my corner. <laughs> and she's gonna let that show on her face a little bit. Silver, you ask us about our past and our lineage. Mm -hmm. You also talk very much about your grandfather. Peepaw, yeah. But it seems to always dodge around the fact of who you are and what's your lineage. As a note, I am playing it of they do not know your your title name. Oh, gotcha. They don't know um, that you're a river right. All they know is that you are silver. At, well, all he knows is and cares about is that you're silver and all that she cares about is that you are the squire slash punching bag <laughs> yeah i'm a i'm my full name is sylvia penelope thorum river right and i come from the blood screamers 
That explains a lot. What does that explain to you? I love hearing people's perspectives of the blood screamers. Over the years, they went from being the most feared tribe from the Northern Territories to being known as Boers, Fletchers, and Keepers of Dwarves. I mean, that's a little bit of a cynical way to put it, but you're not totally wrong. Many of them have old traditions that should probably go the way of most of their standings. Yeah. I will say this, I'm proud to be a blood screamer. I like that we have our traditions. I don't necessarily agree with like married to like a blood screamer. There's a whole beating ritual, but I mean, we're loyal and dedicated. And I think one of my favorite parts of us is we accept orcs when a lot of orcs are shoved aside by other families and we don't discriminate against them. At least forks are seen as blood keepers. Mm -hmm. Being war breed, many see my existence as a taint upon this land. Is Lucas an orc? No. Oh. So whenever I mention warp breed, that is my ver oh, that is my settings version of half orcs. Gotcha. Okay. You can yeah, breed I into war breed. You can get half orcs with mm -hmm. many different range. You have a couple of siblings that would be considered as war breed. Yeah. But well, maybe not necessarily siblings, but at least cousins. Yeah, for sure. I think we said cousins at the beginning because I only have one sister. Yeah. But, yeah, I... Go ahead. Uh, also, as you're sitting here, you're noticing there's another thing about him. There is a marking on this vest that you haven't seen before. It is a uh, crow with its wings fully spread and it, uh, a head pointing straight up. And the wings, like the feathers on the wings, look like icicles. Lucas? I don't know why I said his name, but Lucas, um, what is, she did not say it that way. Lucas, what is, what is that pin? That is the marking of my lineage commander. Interesting. It's really beautiful. It has occasionally cost me a night in the open.
my brain went a completely different direction than probably what you meant by out in the open. Like, you had to sleep outside? Yes. As, like, bait? No, as, like, not allowed to sleep in the establishment. Oh. Oh, why are people so mean? For the same reason that I have yet to see the inside of the walls of Mandan. Not Ma uh, the inside of the walls of Mana. What? All because of where you come from? Yes. But that's stupid. It makes sense. I understand the reasoning. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. And what could possibly be the reason? Like, you're, you're a person. It's not of who I am that makes them uncomfortable. It is of who I still follow. Are they, like, me? Are they, like, evil people? Many would say so. Above table, does Silver know what this is? Probably not. Okay. This is, uh... I will let you know of the fact that this is a holy symbol, but it is a very rare one. I guess I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this, Lucas, because you're just so great. I know I see you as, like, an aggressive person because you train with me, but, like, I don't like the world sometimes. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being restricted to go places because of a symbol and because of my beliefs. Like, that doesn't sit right with me. Oh, well, that's because of where the side that you fell on. It's true. I, you know, I, I dream of a world where I could get rid of that stuff. I, not that I want to be like ruler of the world or anything, but it would be so cool to have enough power to fix all that to get rid of archaic thinking like that and and befriend as many people as possible and just make the world a happier place and i know that sounds really kumbaya like happy go lucky but that's not right i know you don't seem upset about it and it makes sense to you but Take a lot of issues in this world for simple things like that. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. When I rule the world. That's a joke, Lucas. <laughs> it will probably be the same time for others to forget. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting me sit with you guys and talk to you. It's been nice. But my mentors are kind of hard asses and probably want me to go to bed soon. So that way I can wake up early in the morning. Did they crack a joke at that or like at least smile a little bit? At that is the first time that Lady Gant turns your direction. Tomorrow, we start at the same time. 
Yeah, I figured. And as Silver stands, she brushes herself off. Thank you guys for being hard on me. I know you're probably not questioning your style or anything and probably don't want my feedback, but I think I think I have some of the best mentors in the world and I want to thank you for bringing me on. I knew I'd made the right choice. We will see tomorrow if we did. I don't know. You're kind of getting used to her saying that. Okay. Okay. Because it's like, what of, is that? It, it's very much the, uh, uh, the Wesley and Dread Pyre Roberts of good night, sleep well for tomorrow. I, uh, I shall have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> like tomorrow you will prove yourself to me. And if you do not prove yourself to me tomorrow, then it's over. And you yep. seem to be proving yourself every day. Yeah. Even yeah, at, true. even with you holding back early on. Um, do you mind right there if I take a quick bio break? Actually, I am going to wrap us here in just a sec. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. This time flew by. I didn't realize what time it was. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> the last few weeks, no, the last few days run through quickly. The things that you're learning finally properly kicking in. Above table, uh, your character is learning in-game the feat that you took for fourth level. Yep. As well as the feat I gave you. Yep. Dual wielder and then sentinel. Yep. Which is why she's been working at your side. Yep. In the last week of, here's how you use sentinel. Yeah. She knows the feat. <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, for any of the other players watching, and I will make sure to put this out there as well. If you want to learn a feat, you have to learn it from someone who knows it. And it will take time. Lots of hours. At the end of what feels like a very short month, a courier jogs up to you. Um, Miss Silver? message uh, for you that's odd I hope Llama's okay and she'll take the envelope Lady Gant do you mind you have earned a short respite thank you she'll crack open the letter and read it the, uh, it was sealed with a bit of candle wax Fast observation is probably whatever candle was nearby and pressed with a rock. The letter inside reads Meet at this, uh, meet at the grove to the north of the manor. Stay in one of the outlying huts until all of you have gathered. Once, uh, once you all have gathered, we need to talk. The game begins again. And I have no idea who this is from. Nope, and there is no signature. So hey. closer inspection of the writing itself. Yeah. It was written using blood. Ew. It's very clean writing. Okay. <laughs> but like instead of ink, they used a something's blood. So oh, that's jarring. Hey, Lady Gant, you wouldn't happen to recognize this handwriting at all, would you? He looks it over for a moment. I do not. Fair enough. It's written in blood. I... 
unfortunately have to go. Then I shall look forward to when our paths cross again, Squire. From here, we do plan to head to Vesper in the northern part of the lake. From there, we will leave a message of where we head next if you do not return. So that means I can come back and continue my training when I need it again. I expect it. Yeah, I knew we'd be second best friends. Anyways, I meant it what I said, what I said on the docks. I want to thank you. Do you want to maybe... Hug it out. She extends one of her arms towards you in a expectation of the handshake that she has taught you up to this point of grabbing okay. at the wrist. Every time that you have grabbed her at the hand, mm -hmm. she immediately repositions her hand and feels like she's going to break your wrist off. You started to learn yeah. that the reason that she does this is she's also checking for additional weapons. Oh. This is something that is a, I can have control over you as much as you have control over me. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'll go and she'll do the typical handshake. As soon as your hands lock onto each other's forearms, she pulls you in quickly and gives you a single, like, heavy pat on the back that almost knocks the wind out of you with how, like, of the <laughs> yeah. pat it is. And then shoves you back away from her. <gasps> Next time I see you, I expect to see you in your armor. I promise Filigree is getting it fixed for me. And she's probably going to engrave something weird on it, but I'll worry about that later. Thank you. Truly. Um, I am going to get changed quick. I'm going to get changed into my street clothes. I'm just going to throw on my binder and my um, black button up. I don't want my friends to see me in a muscle tank. I'm not ready for that yet. That's a level of intimacy I don't know if they're even ready for. Not that you and I have that level of intimacy, but you know what I mean. This is my workout gear. May I hear or may I hear of your endeavors until either your end or mine? And I promise to serve you proud. Make you proud. Tell Lucas that I care about him too. And thank him for me. I will. Until next time. And that next time will be on the third Tuesday of this month. Ooh, that was so good! Did you have fun? I absolutely had fun. Did I you? loved that. I did. I loved that. Genuinely. I wanted to see and get to know Lady Gant and Lucas because I figured that they would be, you know, in her path in the future um, and have some cute little mentors with their cute little love story. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. We will do our best to inform you of when the next short draft story will be. But until then, be well, roll safe, and enjoy the tavern. Hey everyone, it's your favorite sassy little fighter dwarf, Silver here. 
to thank you for watching this episode of Tales from the Ten Lands. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications whenever we post a new session. You can also catch us live every first and third Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. Central Time over on twitch.tv slash Black Barrel Tavern. Until next time, be well, roll safe, and enjoy the tavern. <laughs>